Okay. We just lost power. Okay, so we just lost power, so now I thought I'd film a little table saw video to show you guys some of my best table saw hacks and tricks and what I do to get some of the fine detail work that I do. So, first off, let's start with this table saw sled, which I made myself. And the thing I really like about it is it's got two magnetic turnbuckles here holding this uh, work stop. So, I was always getting frustrated with the other table saw sleds that you had to manually move the the stop every time and have to tap it with a hammer a little way this way, a little way that way. This one's just super easy. You just tur flip two magnetic turnbuckles and now you've got a rock solid stop. So now you can do production work. You can run a million things through here. It's infinitely adjustable and it's super speedy. But I also put this Wixie digital readout right here. So what I can do is lock it into here. So now as I slide this, I'm reading on the Dixie. So if we move this right up to the blade and we zero out of the Wixie right here. Now we're reading zero on the Wixie. Now as I move this piece away from the blade, now we're reading exactly what that uh, distance is. So I know exactly how to make some very fine intricate pieces and I can make them really speedy without measuring with a set of calipers. So that's a really cool feature of this, but mostly I just like it even just for not using with a readout. I just like it it's super fast that way. So that's number one. Also, I really like this saw. So this is the saw stop and I like because it's super smooth action and it's got this these big cast iron hand wheels that are really smooth the action smooth the bearings are super smooth when you turn the saw on there's no kind of vibrations which is going to transmit into your wood and make it uh, make the finish a little bit compromised so this this saw is super heavy so it's really nice and I found that the 45 adjustment is pretty much right on that would be right here so as you can see, it's very easy to tilt the blade and lock it right down. It's got the 45 and zero degree stops, um, which are pretty accurate. So I like that. Really happy with this purchase. I definitely get one again. Here, come around here. I'll show you the blade. It's right here next to my table saw. I keep all the different kind of blades that I use. So one thing I've considered doing to simplify all these blades is moving toward the Forest Woodworker 2, which is a blade I really like. It just produces a really smooth finish that I found. Now the only reason I wouldn't use that is because sometimes I like to use a couple, well, okay, a couple other reasons. This is a Freud blade, but I really like the flat top grind because the top of the teeth are all flat so it produces a, a square curve for profile in your wood when you cut it. And sometimes that's really nice so that you don't have to go in and clip your corners because I do such intricate work. Um, I have a couple thin blades. Right now on the table saw, I have this blade that I have on right now. It was actually made for circular saws. It's only a 60 thousandth of an inch blade. So that's a really thin curve for a table saw. Um, and I like the cut that it does. And sometimes we use it to get those super thin curves that you wouldn't be able to get with one of these blades because otherwise I like to go full curve just so the uh, the rigidity and the blade is there to make a finer finish. Um, there's a couple other blades I have in here but mostly I could just flip right over to the forest woodworker um, so that's what I'm going to probably move to. And of course I use the dado blades for a lot of my work. They save a lot of time because they hog out a whole lot of material at once. So I like those. Okay, so as far as the ripping goes, so right here I have the Wixie gauge again on my table saw so I can punch this on. And now when I go right up close to the blade, I can zero it out so that it will read zero. So this is incredibly handy for when I'm ripping because I can repeatedly set the fence within a few thousandths of an inch of where I want it to be. And this also tells me where I'm micro adjusting it a few thousandths in either direction, so I really like that. As you see, I have the saw stop uh, fence over on my Unisaw just because it's in better condition than the Bessie Meyer that came with my Unisaw. Okay, let's go up here. Um, I would of course recommend making your own uh, throat plates for the table saw out of wood because you can make them zero kerf, um, either that or buying them plastic they make them or composite of some sort. That way you can crank up through here and you won't have a whole lot of uh, tear out on your wood if you were to use the bigger uh, included throw plates with the saws. You can see the gap here is so big that when you push the wood through, all the wood is gonna wanna tear out and fall through because there's not as much support where the cut is being made. So that's the reason I use those. Um, 
this saw does not, the Unisaw doesn't do a good, as good a job at collecting the dust as the saw stop just because of the way they made the housing inside. In the saw stop there's a little cone around the blade so it collects a lot more of the dust. But again the saw stop is a lot uh, newer than my Unisaw so that's for that reason I like the saw stop a little more. But Okay so this is uh, the shelf I keep above my table saw. Magnetic push sticks that I just attach on here very easily. They allow me to very quickly grab one if I need it. It's always right there. I also keep tape because a lot of time I tape up things on the table saw or adjust my fits. So I have a couple different kinds of tape. I also have this magnetic feather board which locks down onto the table saw like this. And then when you're cutting something, it will keep the constant pressure on as you're pushing it through the blade. So that's super handy. I love this. I like this thing a lot. I don't use it a whole ton though because my parts are so small. Wixie gauge which is a angle gauge. So that will tell you uh, what degree your blade is tilted so uh, it's magnetic. So as you tilt it, it will tell you exactly what the angle is. And uh, I guess I wouldn't recommend that you trust this. Just make sure you test the fit. But I find that it gets me very close and I can adjust it. Uh, very easily using this uh, just a tenth one way or another so that's super handy I keep that right up on my shelf I also keep a square so that I can just double check if I need to know that the blade is super super square to the table again I can use the wixie gauge but I also use this square for right here checking my fence because I want to make sure that there's no go ahead and soft soft touch this and should be so I can check to make sure that there's the my fence is square to the table, which is super critical to making square cuts. So I keep that around. And of course, I also use it to cut that, check that my wood is square after I cut it. Super handy little four inch square like this. Get a good quality one, it will uh, do a lot for you. I like to use the Shield T9 on my uh, cast iron surfaces to keep them from rusting because it gets pretty humid in the shop and all you have to do with this is just spray it on real quick then wipe it off with a rag and it does a good job to preserve the service and keep it from rusting so that's my go-to I do this once every month just to keep the uh, rust from creeping onto the saw sometimes it'll start to turn a little bit brown in the use most used areas so I'll just hit it with a bit of this and I'll always recommend goggles so we just started putting today these on the shelf um, right next to the saw because you always want to make sure that you're wearing goggles with the saw because a chip of the tooth could come loose or the wood oftentimes throws things at you so make sure you have a good set of goggles. That was a good catch. Did you get that? Goggles. Goggles. The other thing I like to do is use a stick to, uh, to hold the really tiny pieces as I'm cutting them. Yeah, I have this stop way up here. If I just use, put the stick right here, it'll do a good job of holding the pieces that I don't want my fingers close enough to the blade. But you also want to make sure that the stick never is going to break and your hands are not going to go into the blade. Having a stick like that is super handy. Um, uh, so when you're cutting, you want to make sure that the wood obviously never comes away from the fence. So usually if I have a board and I'm cutting it on the fence. So the most dangerous thing is when the wood comes away from the fence here. So you always want to make sure that the wood is uptight against the fence when it gets past the blade. So I'll usually push it with the push stick <clears throat> and then I'll grab it back here with just a finger just to make sure that it's not going to come away from the fence. And then I finish the cut. I see so many people just push it with the push stick like this, but as you can see, it kind of wants to wander from the fence a little bit. So I never like that. I always like to keep a finger back here to make sure it never comes away. Keep your hands away from the blades. And like I was telling Micah earlier with the table saw, if you're making a cut on the table saw, you want to make sure when you get through the cut, you don't just pull it back as far as you need to that time. You want to make it a habit of pulling it back all the way to here, which is way far away from the blade, way farther than I need to to make a, a change in the, in the material. But if I'm working to the habit of doing that, I will know that my hands will never wander into the blade. It's just, it's just something that's much less likely that's going to happen. Whereas if I just went back halfway, much easier to accidentally get your fingers caught so never lose, never lose any fingers 
Well guys, that's all the tips I have for today. Hopefully you like this video. Like I said, the power was out, so there's nothing else we could do today. But I decided we'd uh, film a little episode for you here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.